All right, having just done our dot plot uh, videos, let's uh, kind of move on now to Yaz. It's another program that we need to learn to use. And to do that, let's go to Google and let's just type in Y-A-S-S, -S, but you need to type in Y-A-S-S -S Bioinformatics. In other words, when we search here, uh, put in Bioinformatics, because if you put in just Yaz, uh, it'll take you somewhere else. But if you put in bioinformatics, it'll take you, and the first one here is YAS, Genomic Similarity Search Tool. Uh, so that's what we're looking for, and let's click on that. And this is what it looks like. This is the main thing. It kind of explains what it does. And what we want to do is we want to go to the web server. So click here. And this is our site. Now this is kind of an old program, but it works really well. I haven't found anything that does quite what it does uh, as well. So I continue to use it. Now it is a bit clunky, kind of like you have to click way too many times for what you have to do. But like I said, it works. So let's. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to compare some sequences just as we did with dot plot. Uh, so we need to download those sequences. Now we can cut and paste them in down here, or you can browse and upload FASTA files. So we're, we have FASTA files, so let's do that. Let's browse and find our FASTA files. And let's see, where did we put them? They should be, oh, oh I'm on a different machine now. But uh, I can find some FASTA files here. Let's find a FASTA. Sheets. I see all of your work here. Let's see, by full work. Nope. Here we go. We will grab the um, the C3. All right. This is the one that has the two genes on it. One of them being GPX. So I put that one in there, and then I'm going to browse. And we're, gonna, we're in the same place. And here is, let's see, this is the same one. Uh, here's the chimp. Let's see what, um, hmm. maybe something that might be a little different. Let's just throw in um, GPX1 variant 4. All right. And let's do those. So, okay, I've uploaded them, and normally in a normal program, if that's all you do, you can go on. But you can't do that here. You actually, after you upload them, you have to get select and select. So don't forget that. You will make a ton of errors if you forget that. Um, like I said, you could cut and paste them in instead of uploading fast days. But if you do, don't include the header, that first line that goes in a fast day, just the sequence to put in, in for these. Uh, now, what are we going to do? We don't care about the database. We're not searching here. We're comparing. So you can skip this part. Um, now, we have uploaded file 1 and 2, so that's good. We're not going to remove them. You leave them there. All right, now we could run Yaz now, but there are some parameters down here that we want to set. Uh, what we're going to do, this is very similar to dot plot. We're going to compare these two. And we're just going to, we can choose certain things, just leave this as the default. Uh, I may or may not get around to explaining these things to you. Uh, we will learn about e-values later, but not here. But we'll leave this. Now this is forward and reversed complement. Uh, we don't want them, we really just want the forward. So just click forward at this point. And uh, quick alignment and statistics and uh, we'll leave everything the same. So forward and click the green box if it's not clicked and we can leave the rest of it the same. And then we come down here and we run Yaz. All right, and here is the page that we get. This is a relatively quick program. All right, so um, notice it gives us a dot plot, tabular, and raw. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, we get a dot plot with it. So let's look at our simple dot plot. Now we use Eugene because this is too simple. But let's look at it. There we go. 
And so it's showing us that there is a longer piece and there's a shorter piece that is similar. And notice we didn't have to put any parameters in. It kind of figured it out on its own. So this is a bit of a smarter program, but it doesn't let you adjust. And this picture just really isn't going to cut it. We need a better picture than these, than this one. Though you could down, you could save this picture, at, save the image, and zoom in, but it's not as adaptable as Eugene. So um, realize this is 8,000, and we compared it, and it found this right here. This is the actual, this is what I was hoping to see on the dot plot when we did it before, um, but you can see that this is the region that is similar, and that is the actual gene. It is located between 5,000 and just a little bit past 6,000, on that larger C3, chromosome 3 piece. There's another gene up here, but by comparing these two, we literally, that's the line, okay? That is where this gene is located. In this particular case, we found it. So, well, that's great, we found that. Now let's go, let's close this. That's just the dot plot to kind of show you what we found and why you use dot plots. So let's go to tabular, and so we click on tabular, what this does is it gives you, now I know this is probably small on your uh, on the screen, but this gives you places that it's very similar. Now, we are going to learn a little bit about e-values today. That's the main thing you should go by. The smaller the number, the better. And this is 1.81999e, okay, that means times 10, to the negative 23rd. Negative 23rd is the key there. That is a tiny number that's getting very close to... Uh, zero, 293, in other words, 0. 0.00000000, 293 zeros, then you get the 101, oh, one, that's an 8, 18199. All right, so that's a tiny, tiny number. That means this is pretty much identical, uh, and if we click on this, it shows you the sequence, it shows you where it's different, um, but it's not exactly identical based on that. There are some pieces missing here. There's a chunk of it missed, missing. And of course, what we will learn is this is an exon, this is an intron, and this is another exon. And that's how you use YAS to find that. You could use it with dot plot as well. But that's very good. Now you go down and there's another piece. All right, this was from 1 to 918 on one of the sequences, but it's at 5,006 to 6183 on the other one. So this is the long piece, and this is the shorter piece, uh, or the shorter fast day. And so it's very similar for about 918 pieces, uh, nine, um, bases. Now here it does subgroups that are within this that are also, like say, more similar or less similar. So if you want to see these sub pieces, uh, there are some gaps and changes. But uh, what happens where it's completely, I should say, are mostly similar within with large pieces that are, are not as similar, it, it essentially figures that out and breaks it down into smaller pieces for you. This is extremely useful. Um, and uh, so you can look at a smaller piece that is similar. So here it's from 5,027 to 5,199, the second largest piece uh, that is similar. It's within the first one, but uh, so that you can look at just this little piece here. All right, and uh, of course its E-value is not quite as small as the pieces get smaller. Now, when does an E-value not significant? Usually about uh, 10 to the negative fifth or sixth. Uh, so these first three are the three that would be important and uh, you would report these. So in other words, this is 0 0.17646. It's similar, but not similar enough for us to consider it significant. For it to be significant, you need about five zeros in there. So times 10 to the fifth or 10 to the sixth. Above that, you can start saying, hey, this is an important piece for us. Uh, it, not always, you can go look at the others and maybe there's something interesting. But for us, we're just gonna stick to those. So here, if I were to ask you to find the significant pieces and subsequences, uh, you would give me the first three because the first one is 10 to the negative 293, second one is 10 to the negative 60, and the other, the next one is uh, to the minus 60. So these first three, here's the third one, 
those would be the ones that you would report as significant in Yaz. Now, if we come back, now if we do the full slow, let's do the full slow, uh, it gives you a bit more information and uh, actually it's not slow at all, it just gives you additional information. And uh, now we can also use, uh, look at the raw data. All right, it'll just give you this tabular list and that's easy to print. You can copy this and, and paste it into a, a, a form if you like. All right, and the BLAST data, it gives it a slightly different format that you can download um, in what we call BLAST format where you have those lines across where I've shown, shown you video with the little dashed lines. So if you like that format, you can go do that. And this actually gives you every little piece already done for you. This is the way you probably ought to copy it and use it. Um, and let me close that, that blast piece. Now the fast day, it will give you fast days. Uh, now this is ugly. It's multiple sequences in one file. Uh, I really don't like the fast day format on that. And I have no idea what AXT is. That's new, which is interesting that they gave you something new gives you a little bit more data I see but it looks very fast day ish all right so what I would suggest is uh, get familiar with this put in a few sequences I'll be asking you to compare our sequences with dot plots and with Yaz and to report those so that will be a uh, um, a couple of, of problems to do uh, this week not hard uh, I would do Yaz first um, Yaz kind of does some things for you that you don't have to think. You don't have to adjust that the number of base pairs for a dot and you uh, and the percentage. You don't have to figure that out with Yaz. Yaz kind of figures out the best numbers for you pretty well. And uh, you can go to a zoomable Yaz, but it's just it's still not very very useful. Click on it and eh, it's yeah. It, don't use it. <laughs> uh, you can you can click here zoom and. Yeah, you can change these numbers and it'll zoom, but see if it'll do it. Submit. There we go. I click. Yeah. So we'll zoom, but uh, I don't think that's as easy to use as uh, the Eugene. So I will ask you to do some Eugene and some, uh, dot plot, and I will ask you to use do a Yaz analysis on the three genes you've downloaded, and uh, there will be some files that uh, some. Some things you need to read um, about dot plot and about alignments that I will give you. Uh, there are some handouts that I will put in the contents. And then once you do that, I'll put them in the assignment folders too. But you read those and, um, and follow the directions that I put into the assignment uh, using Yaz. So here's Yaz. Um, probably your best bet for uh, creating your results and sending them to me it's going to be under the blast one where it goes there and then download and then once you get here you can cut and paste the pieces that you want I like this one because it gives you the uh, the locations on both ends so you kind of know where you're at when you're doing it and here's your piece that's missing this would be an intron so if you're we talk about splicing in a little bit that would be where you would locate your intron and that's important because we need to learn to find introns it's one of the first things we do in here that's useful all right so moving on that's yes and uh, those are the tools we need this week are dot plot and yes